What's good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're in a neighborhood that makes you feel like you've traveled halfway across the globe. It was once the near south side's Little Italy, but today you can learn about your Chinese zodiac sign, hang out in a pagoda on the Chicago River, and celebrate the Lunar New Year all in the same day. That's right, we're in Chinatown, Chicago. And in this video, we'll be answering some questions like, how did the story of Chinese people in Chicago begin? Is this the oldest Chinatown in the United States? And just how many dragons are on the Nine Dragon Wall? But before we get started, you already know what to do. Go ahead and finesse that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and check out my Patreon page for exclusive community and bonus content. I also have a trivia question for you guys. What do the characters on the Chinatown Gate at Cermak and Wentworth say? But with that all out the way, let's go ahead and explore Chinatown Chicago. Chinatown is located in the Armour Square community area of Chicago. Like I've mentioned before, neighborhood boundaries in Chicago are not official. Only the 77 community areas are. But for our purposes, Chinatown is bordered on the north by 18th Street, on the east by Clark, then I-94, on the south by I-55, and on the west by the Chicago River. Nearby neighborhoods include South Loop, Bridgeport, and Pilsen. To get to Chinatown, take the CTA Red Line to the Cermak Chinatown stop. You can also take the Green Line to the Cermak McCormick Place stop. Buses that serve the neighborhood include the 21, 24, and 62. Divi stations can also be found throughout the area, but my favorite way to get to Chinatown is by taking the Chicago water taxi to Ping Tom Park. In the 1870s, Chinese people began arriving to Chicago, but from the West Coast and not from China. They had begun settling in the Western United States in the 1850s in response to the gold rush and to work in manual labor jobs like railroad building. However, due to rising discrimination and racist violence, they started moving toward Eastern cities. Upon arriving to the Windy City, many settled on Clark Street in between Van Buren and Harrison. This became Chicago's first Chinatown. At the turn of the century, there were just over 1,000 Chinese residents living in the city. Due to racist laws prohibiting Chinese immigration to the U.S. from 1882 to 1943, a second generation of Chinese Americans would not show up until much later. Chinese people were initially very welcome in Chicago and opened businesses like laundry and restaurants. However, over time, they started facing much of the same discrimination that they had left behind on the West Coast. The first Chinese neighborhood in Chicago lasted until around 1912. As the central business district expanded and rents rose, many started moving to the Armour Square community area, specifically to the near south side's Little Italy. The demographics of this once Italian neighborhood shifted, and soon Wentworth Avenue was full of restaurants and businesses that reflected the area's new identity. Over the years, prominent families like Moy, Wang, and Chin would work with the city on behalf of the community and help many of their relatives make the move from China to Chicago. King Tom was born in 1935 right here in Chicago. He attended local schools and then went to Northwestern where he earned a BA and a JD. After college, he became a titan of business and a leader in the local community. In the late 1980s, a real estate group that he formed purchased former industrial and railroad land just north of Archer Avenue. This is where new Chinatown Square and more residential buildings for the neighborhood were constructed beginning in the late 1990s. This community has grown from just a couple of blocks here in Armour Square to a historic Chicago neighborhood. Not bad for the second oldest Chinatown in the United States. The architecture of Chinatown tells the story of this area's success as an Asian ethnic enclave. You can see this for yourself in the structures with heavy Chinese influences. Perhaps the most recognizable piece of architecture is the Chinatown Gate, designed by Peter Fung and completed in 1975. It is based on a gate in Beijing and marks a major turning point for this neighborhood because it had gone through a couple of rough decades before seeing a resurgence in the 1970s. It is a symbol of unity and cultural exchange. The Pui Tak Center, formerly known as the Anlong Chinese Merchants Association Building, was designed by Michelson and Rogenstad and built in 1927. Though the architects were Norwegian, the style of the building is inspired by the architecture of the Guangdong region of China, the birthplace of many of Chicago's early Chinese residents. It is a Chicago landmark and, in my opinion, the most beautiful building in the entire neighborhood. The Nine Dragon Wall was constructed in 2003 and is a replica of a much larger Nine Dragon Wall in Beijing's Beihai Park. There are nine large dragons featured, plus 500 smaller dragons in colors like red, gold, and blue, symbolizing good fortune. The Moy Association building was also designed by Michelson and Rogenstad and completed in 1928. Its colorful design was inspired by photos taken by a German architect who traveled throughout China. 
Chinatown Square was constructed in 1993 on land purchased from the Santa Fe Railroad Company. It was designed by Harry Weiss and Associates, inspired by a traditional Chinese imperial court. There are several gates leading into the square and a plaza at front and center, complete with a stage and 12 bronze statues depicting all of the Chinese zodiac animals. There is also a mosaic depicting traditional Chinese values made from over 100,000 pieces of hand-painted cut glass. The mosaic was designed by artists Xiao Ping and Yan Dong. The Chinatown branch of the Chicago Public Library was built in 2015. It was designed by Skidmore, Owens and Merrill, the same firm behind the Sears Tower. The building creates the impression of a glowing lantern and the interior, which makes you feel perfectly balanced, was designed with feng shui in mind. Like I mentioned earlier, this area was previously the near south side's Little Italy. There are homes and office buildings dating all the way back to the late 1800s. And as you'd expect, you could find typical Chicago architecture of the 19th century, like worker cottages and Italianate style buildings. St. Therese Chinese Catholic Church was constructed in 1904 as Santa Maria in Coronata. It is the most prominent reminder that this was once an Italian neighborhood. A good amount of people visit Chicago's Chinatown for the food. In case you were wondering, yes, you can get incredible Chinese food here. Cantonese, Sichuan, and even Hong Kong style. In addition, as one of the only thriving Chinatowns in the United States, today there is a more pan-Asian collection of cuisine. You can get Korean, Japanese, and Vietnamese food in this neighborhood. Dai Bak, this is a Korean barbecue spot where they actually cook the food for you. QXY dumplings. This is where you can get some authentic soup dumplings. The oldest Chinese bakery in the city, Chiu Quan. We got the barbecue pork bun. How perfect would this be for Instagram? We did an entire food tour of the Chinatown neighborhood. Be sure to check out the link in description below. Aside from the gourmet food and striking architecture, there is so much to do in Chinatown. Starting with Ping Tom Park, a 17-acre former railroad yard right here along the Chicago River. It's named in honor of Ping Tom, who played an instrumental role in its creation. Once upon a time, Chinatown had access to two large parks. However, they were both demolished in order to make way for an expressway. The Sun Yat-sen Play La Park was constructed in the mid-1970s, named for the father of modern China. This park, though, is only one-third of an acre and bordered by a very busy expressway. Not exactly a picture of peace. Ping Tom Memorial Park is inspired by a traditional Chinese walled garden. There are four dragon columns in the entryway, a riverfront boardwalk, a field house, a boathouse, and a beautiful pagoda right here along the banks of the Chicago River. After spending a weekend in Chinatown, this has quickly become one of my favorite parks in the entire city. Every year, the neighborhood hosts the Chinatown 5K, a race that takes you through two of the most iconic streets in the neighborhood, Cermak and Wentworth. Also celebrated each year is the Lunar New Year, culminated with a great parade. This is an incredible cultural event right here in the city. All who join in the festivities celebrate the new beginning and leave behind the old. We're in the Chinese American Museum of Chicago. There's a suggested donation of $5 per adult, so of course, you know, we had to throw in that $10. A lot of artifacts from Chinatown throughout the history, some good stories also some really elegant family heirlooms here. This is a small community museum, but it's definitely something that's a great thing to do, especially if you want to support the local neighborhoods, the local economy. Definitely come here. There's a lot of culture, a lot of great history. Who knows what you might learn right here at the Chinese American Museum of Chicago. There is also plenty of shopping to be done in Chinatown. You can find everything from Korean beauty products and Japanese candy to restaurant supplies and traditional Chinese home decor. Over the weekend, I picked up a golden Lucky Cat statue and Narissa got some Korean face masks. St. Therese Chinese Catholic Church offers masses in English, Cantonese, and Mandarin. The Chinatown branch of the Chicago Public Library was once a small storefront on Wentworth in the 70s, but today it is a beautiful modern building with an incredible selection of books. For Great Chinatown nightlife options, check out Pop KTV, Number 18 Karaoke, and Zero Degree Karaoke Bar and Club. There are a few hotel options in the area, Spring Hill Suites, Chinatown Hotel, and Jaslyn Hotel. Obviously, the majority of Chinatown residents are Chinese. However, that doesn't mean that people from other backgrounds don't live here. There are apartments and condos available for rent. And although it may not be the most popular destination neighborhood for people moving to Chicago, I definitely wouldn't rule it out. Living in Chinatown gives you access to some of the best restaurants in the city, an amazing park right on the river, and easy access to public transportation to get you to and from the city center. As of this filming, we found a few three-bedroom condos for rent, anywhere from $17 to $2,100. 
The main vibes in Chinatown are cultural heritage, great food, and a sense of community. One thing that I can really say is that above all, I've always felt super welcome in this neighborhood, whether that's running the 5K, watching the Lunar New Year Parade, or grabbing some great food at one of the local restaurants. This isn't exactly a hidden gem. Plenty of residents from around the city and surrounding suburbs come down here to get their Peking duck, soup dumplings, boba tea, and so much more. Chinatown Square in particular is one of my favorite areas to hang out. It is a pedestrian only zone. There are gonna be no cars bothering you. And frankly, we need more spaces like that around the city. I love that I can come to Chinatown to try something new or go for an old favorite. There are amazing views of the skyline, a dope branch of the Chicago Public Library, and incredible historic architecture. You can get plenty of pictures for your social media feed, fill your belly, and learn something new about another culture. Chinatown is one of my absolute favorite neighborhoods in Chicago. I visit frequently for food, culture, and fun. It sounds cliche, but I love that by simply commuting a couple of miles, I feel like I've traveled outside the city. This is also a great neighborhood to shop for a unique and special gift. Instead of going to a big box store or online retailer, come down to the neighborhood, shop local, and support these incredible businesses. Just like any other neighborhood in Chicago, this area is constantly changing with new buildings going up and restaurants opening. However, there is so much tradition and heritage here with buildings going all the way back to the early 1900s. There's a great blend of old and new, a beautiful park right on the river, and it's super easy to get here via the CTA red line or the water taxi. I hope that as the years go by, Chinatown continues to thrive and remains a welcoming place for all. Did you get the answer to the trivia question? The characters on the Chinatown gate loosely translate to the world is for all or everything under the heavens for the people. Shout out to the folks who requested the Chinatown neighborhood guide. Be sure to let us know what neighborhood you'd like to see us visit next. Make sure to finesse that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel to join the Gusto gang, and I would really appreciate it if you shared this video with your very best friend. Also check out my Patreon page for exclusive community and bonus content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time, but for now, we're out of here. Peace. All right, let's go.